My name is Mitchell, and I'm a junior at Rice University, majoring in electrical engineering. In this video, I will explain what a pup is and why they are useful. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about how a device like your smartphone communicates with the server. Let's get started. Let's say device 1 is your smartphone, and it wants to talk to the server. Well, the server stores lots of personal information, such as your text messages and photos, so it doesn't want to let just any device connect to it. Therefore, the server must authenticate your, that your smartphone is actually your smartphone. Each device stores something called a key, which is basically like a password. Another device, like your friend's smartphone, has a completely different password. These keys are stored in non-volatile memory, which just means that the key won't be lost even if the device is turned off. When a device wants to send information to the server, the server first asks the device for its key. If it responds appropriately, a channel is established, and the device and server can communicate. But now let's imagine that there's a bad guy, a, a hacker man, who wants to seal your information. Well, if the hacker man has his own device and was somehow able to figure out your smartphone's key, he could essentially impersonate your smartphone, talk to the server, and steal your data. This is where puffs become useful. Puffs are an alternative form of security to storing keys in non-volatile memory. But what exactly is a puff? A puff, or a physical unclonable function, acts like a digital fingerprint for a device. Now let's go ahead and break down each of those pieces. The physical part refers to the fact that the puff relies on the physical properties of the device. Going back to the two devices we discussed earlier, suppose that you and your friend both have an iPhone. While both of these iPhones were designed to behave in exactly the same way, there were small variances inside the tiny circuits inside your smartphone that make your iPhone unique from your friends. I'll give you an example so you have an idea about where these differences arise from. One of the major components inside your smartphone is something called a transistor. Now, this transistor would obviously be a lot smaller inside your phone. But a property of every single transistor is something called a threshold voltage. Now, don't worry too much about what that means, but suppose that the threshold voltage for a transistor inside your smartphone is designed to be 1 volt. Okay, now each transistor will have a threshold very, very close to 1 volt, but it will actually follow a bell curve kind of like this, with some values on either side. So this transistor here might be 1.02 volts, and this one over here might be 0 0.99 volts. Now, if we're trying to develop some type of password from this device, we could utilize this physical property. The next part of Puff is unclonable. What makes a device unclonable is actually related to what we just talked about. See, every device has hundreds upon thousands of transistors, and it's impossible to know if the threshold voltage is going to fall above or below that one volt mark. So even if the hacker man builds a device using the exact same parts as your iPhone, your device would be different because of these physical properties. In other words, just like your fingerprint, your device is impossible to replicate. The final part of Puff is the function. Now we can actually get into how to use these physical properties to authenticate your device. Recall that a function is simply something that takes in an input and spits out an output. In this situation, we call the input a challenge and the output is the response. Similar to keys with non-volatile memory, the server sends the device a challenge. The Puff device uses these physical properties that we discussed earlier to come up with a response. And if the response is correct, then the server and the device can communicate. However, the difference is that each time that the device wants to send information, the server can send a different challenge to the Puff, and the response to each challenge will be unique. There are typically thousands of unique challenge response pairs, so even if the hacker man knew the response to a few challenges, he would still have no idea what the response to any given challenge would be. So puffs are more secure than non-volatile memory systems thanks to this challenge response system. But puffs are also less susceptible to physically invasive attacks that might reveal a key, because during a physically invasive attack, a device's physical properties would be altered. And since a puff relies on these physical properties, its responses would be affected, and the hacker man would not be able to accurately clone the device. Furthermore, puffs are cheaper, use less power, and take up less space than non-volatile memory systems. 
all of which are very, very useful for small devices that are manufactured on a large scale. In conclusion, we've talked about how a device securely sends and receives information from a server, what a puff is, and why puffs are better than non-volatile memory systems. If you have any further questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you.